Hello everyone! Do you think you have what it takes to create the most delicate and stunning jewellery in Eorzea? Can you work with the most precious stones and finest metals? Yes? Good! But can you handle being insulted at every turn? Have your work belittled and your confidence crushed without mercy? You think so? Well, maybe then got what it takes to become a master goldsmith in Realmriborn. In this video we will explore the journey that awaits you if you join the goldsmithing guild in Realmriborn. The highs, the lows, quite a bit of insults, and a mysterious thief that has come to Ulda. We can find the goldsmithing guild in Ulda. They are located in the desert city because of the ready supply of raw material in the ore-rich region of Thanalan. And while they are best known for their work with jewellery, they also craft other things, including staves, auras and needles. They have worked for years on advancing the art of goldsmithing, including inviting and learning from goldsmiths from the Far East, taking the two different techniques and blending them together to bring out the best of both. As we head over to join them, we are told to talk to Serendipity, the guildmaster, who immediately confuses me for a mammoth. Yes, this is a great start. Though, what is a mammoth exactly? They are these clockwork beings who serve in a variety of roles in Final Fantasy. The first major mammoth we meet is here in the Goldsmithing Guild. He is Gigi, the destroyer of any self-confidence when it comes to crafting. He's quite unique. We will encounter many more mammoths through our game, but most of them are the more common types, which are simple personalities capable of some basic speech. They are usually relied upon for a variety of menial tasks. And generally a single mammoth can only perform singular or few simple tasks. But then there are mammoths that are more advanced. Gigi is one of those, containing a personality. I mean one, but a personality nonetheless. As we take on the role of a student with the guild, we get to know Gigi quite well. As this mammoth is the assistant to Serendipity, our guildmaster, and he helps in evaluating every single thing we craft. And he does so quite brutally. We actually learn that Gigi has been in the guild for a very long time, serving under each of the guildmasters, and now he seems to believe he is the supreme authority within the guild. He is a walking, talking archive on the art of goldsmithing, but he is also the breaker of spirits. As he announces, my copper bar would not even be fit for a chamber pot. And my gorgets are so grotesque that they are an affront to the gods themselves. I am actually surprised the guildsmith has as many members as it does. But under this treatment, we continue our training till we get an honest to god commission. We are to deliver 12 copper rings to a client. Now make note that for some reason in the crafting, we can make copper ring and copper rings. And these are two different items. So I dutifully crafted 12 copper rings, as in 12 individual rings, only to learn that there is an item called copper rings, which is what Serendipity wanted. Thankfully, after googling this, I learned that I am far from the only person who has made this mistake, and I am probably not the last. As we bring the correct rings and prepare for Gigi's scolding, they say they've seen worse. Wait, what? Even Serendipity is confused. That is high praise coming from the angry little mammoth. We are sent to deliver the rings to Robert, who is the client. He is a sultan sworn and refused to wait within the guild hall, as he might distract the goldsmiths. And I think he was right, as Serendipity claims she wouldn't mind a distraction like him at all. It seems like somebody has a bit of a crush. Thankfully, Robert is not hard to find, as he seems to have a bit of a thing for the guildmaster himself, as he asks us to send his fondest regards to her. And she seems utterly flattered. This is honestly kind of cute. It kind of feels like he didn't want to stay inside because he thinks he is cute. And I'm glad he didn't because he would not get any work done. Over the course of some time, we take on improving our craft. And Gigi takes an unusual interest in the guildmaster's appearance, criticizing her butt shape and even eating her cake to assist her in not straying further from traditional standards of beauty. Yeah, apparently there are some personality shifts going on in GG, and after examining him she notices there is a piece that needs replacing. Thankfully it's something she can craft herself, and this is where we learn a little bit more about Mehmet. You see, while most things within GG she can replace, 
There is one that she cannot, that she cannot, and that would be the mammoth's core. A mammoth's core is what made Gigi, well, Gigi. It holds his memories and personality. It's, in a way, his soul. Of course, he wasn't made like this when he was originally made over a century ago. He was just a simple mammoth. But with assisting Guildmaster after Guildmaster, he gathered experience and wisdom, exceeding any living goldsmith. So if the core were ever to be damaged, all that would be lost. And even if the mammoth is an utter pain, I would still be a little bit sad to lose him. So let's do our best to keep the little guy whole and healthy and far, far away from any new apprentices at the guild. And especially clients. In fact, our next mission relates to failing the second part. It so happens that a merchant came by to discuss a bulk order of earrings. Unfortunately, Gigi decided to voice his opinion on the jewellery the man was sporting, calling it toddy bobbles beneath even a Lomintian whore. Understandably, the client stormed off, quite upset by that. Serendipity is absolutely mortified and asks us to go find this Roroton and bring him a pair of the finest malicite earrings we can make as an apology. Hopefully this will smooth things over. We take a moment to craft the fine pair of earrings before bringing them to the Lalafell, who is suitably impressed. It turns out that Roroton is a traveling merchant, going from place to place, buying goods and selling them for a higher price than others. One of the things he likes to sell is a variety of jewelry, and he likes our crafting so much that he would love to get other of our wares and sell them far and wide. We are of course very excited about this, but we are also part of the guild, so we do direct him to speak to Serendipity about it. He promises to do so, and hopefully this time Gigi will be kept far, far away from the man in the future. Because it's truly not a good look if a client comes in and immediately they are insulted by an angry mammoth, no matter how much we like him. From then on, we take on few commissions for Oroton, making sure to hand deliver them so the poor guy doesn't have to enter the guild hall and face the wrath of Gigi. Serendipity also seems to be developing quite the crush on our Sultan's sworn friend. And most impressive of all, Gigi is slowly moving from fully destroying any self-confidence we have to just severely wounding it each time we craft something. Progress is being made on all fronts. It is some time later a rumor starts spreading around Ulda. Apparently there is a dangerous thief within the city. He is known as the Jade Fox and Serendipity fears he might try to disguise himself as a new customer and defraud us or the guild. So, for the time being, she will be personally scrutinizing anyone who seeks to make commissions. She believes she is the best for the job, as she is an excellent judge of character. We're so doomed. <laughs> but what can you do? She is the boss. So as we continue our work working on a variety of commissions for Roroton, we are asked by Robert the Sultan Sworn to meet him in private, before we head to Roroton with the latest commission. For some reason, as Serendipity tells us what to do, Gigi's are screaming, Secrets and lies, secret and lies, the man is not more than a miserable pile of secret and lies. We are surprised by the outburst, but have to head out on our task. As the guild is quite busy these days, with the Sultana's name day looming ever closer. On our way with the commission, we stop by to meet Robert. He warns us that the Sultan Sworn believe the Jade Fox is plotting to infiltrate the festivities and rob the guests of the Sultana's name day. The Sultan's Warren don't know who the Jade Fox is, so they are now secretly investigating some of the guests, including Roroton, who will be attending, and so far it is bringing up peculiar results. It seems Roroton has no ties to the 77 caravans, or any other major trade organization, and they can't find any history on him before he arrived at the city. This is quite peculiar, because if he was actually a merchant, he would definitely have connection with some of the other merchants, or at least with some of the caravans. So Robert is worried that Roroton is the Jade Fox, and we are somehow part of his plan, even if we don't know so, so we must be careful. The news are concerning indeed, and as we bring our commission to Roroton, we discreetly try to get to know him a little bit better, size him up a bit. We ask him why he really came to Ulda, and his answer is actually quite interesting. He claims he came here because he respects us in particular as an artisan and that he is not truly a dedicated entrepreneur as he has so far claimed. He is in fact not a businessman at all, 
but an altruist of the arts, traveling the world in the search of artistic masterpieces, which he then gives us to, which he then gives to others, seeing it as sort of a sacred duty of his. But of course, we must tell no one, as because in Ulta, a merchant not seeking profit is an oddity. Though, to be fair, everything about his answer was an oddity. It definitely did not help decrease my concern about him being the Jade Fox. If anything, now he just seems more odd and more likely to actually be a thief. We do return to Serendipity, where we learn she spoke with Robert after we left. She is horrified that, th that this thief might try to ruin the royal gala, especially because the gala is being held on the name day of the Sultana. But we must trust in the Sultan's warrant to handle this as our task is of course to continue our goldsmithing work. As the guild is full of work now, with, with every person of note in the city trying to have something made for the Sultana as a name day gift. And just before the name day celebration, a rather sleep deprived serendipity tasks us with our most important commission yet. This is again one for Oroton, and this time it's a gift to the Sultana on her name day. The right gift could change the standing in Ulda society, though it has to be perfect. For a gift, we craft a stunning black pearl ring, which we infuse with piety materia. We present the ring to serendipity for inspection, as no mistake can be tolerated for this momentous occasion. And Orton is thrilled as he sees the ring. But just as our business is almost over, Robert bursts into the guild, accusing Roroton of being the Jade Fox. He takes Roroton into custody and claims the ring as evidence. And as they leave, we stand behind utterly stunned. Only for us to soon discover that Gigi is missing. Concerned about the mammoth's well-being, if he's just wandering around the city alone, we head out to search. Serendipity does recall him muttering something about Pearl Lane? So we make our way out and there we find Gigi along with Robert and Roroton. Gigi is furiously accusing Robert of being an imposter, that he is in fact the Jade Fox, and Robert just confirms it. He is the Jade Fox. He just decides to tell us that yes, he is the Jade Fox. He is there to take the ring. He then attempts to take Roroton hostage, but Gigi will have none of it. He attacks Robert, and with Roroton's help, they subdue the thief, but not without cost. Gigi gets severely damaged in the process. But not just any damage, but one to his core. But his personality and memories are stored. Desperate, we try to fix him with serendipity, but we don't know how to do it. So we do the first thing that comes to mind. We take the ring we crafted with the Sultana and kind of just jam it into Gigi. Which does actually work. It does end up reactivating the Mammoth, so it can announce its dislike for our creation. Yeah, he's fine. It's still GGA, still the same personality. Because apparently the damn thing overcame his injuries simply from the pure disgust and hate for our crafting. And I personally will take great joy in knowing one of my horrid creations will now forever be part of him. With this, Robert is taken into custody. Roroton will have to get a new gift for the Sultana and we can return to the guild. In our final conversation with the Serendipity, he asks us to never again mess with the internals of a mammoth, at least till we know what we're doing. Still, she does share a little secret with us. Gigi's original name was actually Menying. He was the first mammoth ever built. He is the basis for every mammoth in existence. Though Gigi does not know this, simply because if his ego becomes any more inflated, he will float away into the sky. But with our action, we say the most precious mammoth that is out there. And with that, we finished the story of the goldsmith and our realm reborn. We crafted some stunning things, had our spirit broken by a mammoth numerous times, and returned the favor by saving his life. A thief was caught and all ended well in the time for the Sultana's name day. And with that, our story ends for now. Thank you so much for listening. If you like lore videos like this, make sure to do all the good YouTube stuff. 
and subscribe and press the notification bell so you will be notified of my future videos. If there is something lore related you want me to cover, put it down in the comments. I am always eager to cover something you guys are interested in. But for now, thank you so much for being here and I hope you have a lovely day.